Pressure is mounting on the Biden administration to take harsher action on Iran as some senators claim Iran's oil wealth is helping fund Russia's war on Ukraine. Now, at a review of the 2024 State Department budget, Republican Senator Ted Cruz called the Biden administration weak, claiming its weakness on Iran is indirectly supporting Russia's war efforts. Now, in addition to boosting its nuclear capacity, that is the charge coming in from Ted Cruz. Now, in a scathing attack, Cruz told Secretary of State Antony Blinken that a rethink is needed on the previous administration's oil sanctions on Iran because it has led to the empowering of the Iranian regime's nuclear program and helped it support Russia's military capacity through drone sales. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, welcome. Senator, good to see you. You have spoken passionately, and I believe honestly, about your commitment to helping Ukraine de defeat Vladimir Putin. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly that it is an important national security interest of the United States for Russia to lose. Putin is a KGB thug who seeks to reassemble the Soviet empire at the expense of American interest and at the, sa and at the expense of the safety and security of Americans. And of course, in China, she is watching closely to see how America responds to Putin's aggression. I'm deeply concerned, however, that no matter how much you may want to help Ukraine, there is something the Biden administration wants more, which is to re-enter a nuclear agreement with Iran. This administration has shown weakness on Iran since day one and continues to do so. Just in the last few weeks, there have been reports that you again waived congressional sanctions to allow Iraq to move money to the Central Bank of Iran, which the Ayatollah uses for terrorism, for ballistic missile development, and nuclear weapons work. Of course, that's not all Iran is doing. In January, Mr. Secretary, you publicly assessed that Iran had become, quote, Russia's top military backer. That's a quote. And indeed, Russia uses Iranian banks and tankers and planes to move weapons and to dodge sanctions. Yet the administration and the State Department in particular continue to allow Russia-Iranian cooperation out of a refusal to crack down on Iran. The Biden administration is boosting and in many cases funding both sides of this war. If you look at energy, and I want to start with this, I want to ask you about the use by Russia of Iranian oil tankers. As you know, Iran violates U.S. energy sanctions by using its own tankers, as well as a ghost fleet of foreign flagships. You've allowed that ghost fleet to grow dramatically. The Iranians were using about 70 tankers when President Biden was elected. Today, they're using about 300 tankers. You did not sanction those tankers. Instead, the administration allowed Iran to restore its energy exports, getting above one million barrels a day, which is funding the regime and funding the war on Ukraine. Last month was the highest oil exports Iran has had since 2018. Now, we can argue about what that means for Iran, but I want to ask what it means for Ukraine and for Russia. Russia is now using dozens and dozens of tankers from that ghost fleet that the administration allowed to grow in violation of our energy sanctions directly to aid Putin's aggression in Ukraine. Why hasn't the Biden administration sanctioned them? Uh, Senator, two things. First, going back to the, uh, to the first point, um, the symbiotic relationship that we're seeing emerge between Iran uh, and Russia to include the provision by Iran of drone technology to Russia for use in Ukraine and the provision by Russia uh, to Iran or the threatened provision of weapon systems, including uh, planes. Uh, this is something that we are very actively and aggressively working to, uh, to break up uh, across the government. Uh, we have gone after the uh, drone network, working to uh, sanction uh, dozens of individuals. Have you reimposed the oil sanctions? And we are looking at the most effective way we can to have get you reimposed the, the oil sanctions at the ghost fleet. So we have imposed sanctions across the entire UAV network. Uh, we're looking at how we can most effectively deal with the Have you with stopped the, the Ayatollah from the, selling the a million barrels a day of oil? We're working on making sure that we can do that effectively. It was done in the prior administration. It was this administration that refused to enforce those sanctions that allowed 
billions of dollars to flow to the Ayatollah you're, you're, that's being used to attack the Ukrainians right we're now. We're working every day to enforce the existing sanctions on Iran, even as we're looking uh, at imposing new ones. M M and Mr. Secretary, time, with respect, that, that's not remotely true. The oil sanctions you could enforce tomorrow, but it is a political decision not to enforce it, and you are providing the funds that Iran is using to provide drones that are attacking Ukrainian military and attacking Ukrainian civilians. You said you just noticed recently the growing cooperation between Russia and Iran. If you were not aware of that two years ago, this administration has not been paying attention. Let's talk, for example, about Russian-Iranian nuclear cooperation. President, President Zelensky has repeatedly said that Russia is compensating Iran for weapons through nuclear cooperation. Last year, you signed waivers specifically related to the Iran nuclear deal that suspended congressional sanctions against Russia and Iran conducting exactly this kind of nuclear cooperation. You recently renewed these waivers. President Zelensky is right. You know that so much so that in your recent transmissions you wrote to Congress that previous waivers you had issued, quote, would expand Iran's nuclear programs and further deepen cooperation between Iran and Russia at a time that Iran is providing lethal aid to Russia for its use in its illegal invasion in Ukraine. But you didn't cancel the waivers. Instead, you signed them, enabling broad Russia-Iranian nuclear cooperation. Why did you sign these waivers, and why did you do so repeatedly? Um, these waivers have been in the nonproliferation interests of the United States, particularly to make sure that materials that Iran could use to develop uh, its nuclear program uh, were shipped uh, out of Iran and to make sure that uh, facilities uh, in Iran uh, would not be developed in a way that could lead to, uh, to further proliferation or the advancement of the program. Uh, in the last uh, instance, uh, we have narrowed uh, the, uh, the waivers significantly, again, to make sure that they're focused only on activities that actually advance our nonproliferation goals. To make but, sure Mr. That Iran Secretary, with all due respect, that, that, that answer does, does not pass the laugh test. Under this administration, you have allowed Iran to get to the brink of a nuclear weapon. There's no work being conducted to make the program safer. Russia is on the side of Iran, and Iran is on the side of Russia. They're both against us. And it's staggering that the Biden administration would say Russia is still on our side trying to constrain Iran. These, you could halt this cooperation. You could halt the, the civilian nuclear cooperation with Russia. You could halt the oil sales. But this administration is not willing to do so because of politics. And as a result, the billions of dollars the Ayatollah is getting because of your decisions and President Biden's decisions are funding the war in Ukraine. Why, why is this administration funding both sides of this I, war? I, I fundamentally disagree with that judgment, Senator. Uh, we had Iran's nuclear program in a box. Unfortunately, it got out of that box as a result of pulling out, not by us, uh, of the nuclear agreement. Uh, as a result, despite the maximum pressure that's been exerted by the previous Would you answer the question I asked, why are you funding both sides of the war? That nuclear program has moved forward. Would We've you answer the question, why are you funding both sides of the Ukraine war? We're not, we're, not, we're not funding both sides. We're trying to make sure, wherever we can, that we're pushing back on Iran, having access to, to resources. But you're not going to stop the oil we're, sales. We're, we're looking at the most effective way to deal with... Enforce the, the sanctions. It's not complicated. 